Hello YouTube, my name is Serenium and I'm a second year medical student and today, today I'm going to be talking to you about congenital adrenal hyperplasias. Now this topic is very important and it can be very daunting at first due to all the pathways and symptoms that can occur with it, but if we break it down into three basic concepts, we can do pretty well on these for the boards. So the first thing we have to know is that they're all autosomal recessive. The second thing is they can be broken down into three main deficiencies, 21 hydroxylase, 11 beta hydroxylase, and of course 17 alpha hydroxylase. Now, what, now what, what we have to understand is that the principle behind all these deficiencies is that the pathology occurs due to a decrease in product that occurs in the enzyme within the pathway that the symptom is occurring in, and there's an increase in product that occurs due to shunting that occurs due to the deficiency of the enzyme within that pathway in which the enzyme is deficient in. Now it seems kind of uh, confusing at first to sort of understand, but if we go through examples, we can sort of make some sense out of all this. So let's first talk about 21 hydroxylase. So if we can see through the pathway, it's pretty much involved in only two of these paths, as you can see through here. So if we're deficient in it, we're gonna, we're gonna have to block this, guy, this pathway right here and this pathway right here. So what I like to think about it is sort of like a map. So what we're gonna have is we're gonna have a detour that has to occur here because it's construction, another detour here. So now you're forced to go over here. So as a result, the path is gonna be shunted this direction, causing an increase in andro and also an increase at the end of the day in DHT. So, that's, so, I, so, I can, so if you think about it like that way, it's pretty simple. And this pathway as itself is not completely correct. I've sort of simplified it down in order to see the key enzymes involved. And I think it could be helpful during your boards if you have some time to sort of write this down if you're very confused and can't remember things on the spot. So as you can see, you're gonna have, since there's some shunting that's occurring due to these roadblocks, you have a decrease in cortisol, a decrease in aldosterone, and an increase in DHT, as you can see right here. Now there's, three, now there's three different presentations that can occur. The most severe form is the salt wasting form that can be seen at, at birth. And some of the symptoms that occur are is, is uh, hypotension. And as a result, with hypotension, there's gonna be an increase in renin. Now the second form is a more moderate form, and that's gonna be the simple viralizing form. And lastly, the most mild form, which means that there's still gonna be enough enzyme present, is gonna be seen as uh, some acne, uh, hirsutism, and that's gonna be called the non-classical form. Now let's talk about the next enzyme, 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency. So as we can see, it's involved in the, almost the same roads, if we're still referring to the map, as 21 hydroxylase. However, there's an extra street here, which I like to call deoxycorticosterone, which is what it's called. And so, well, there's a roadblock right here. But the key thing with this pathway is, although we're still gonna have a decrease in aldosterone, a decrease in cortisol, and an increase in DHT, as we saw with 21 hydroxylase, and 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency, since the roadblock occurs after deoxycorticosterone, this is gonna build up. Now what's crucial about deoxycorticosterone is that it is a mineral of corticoid, so as a result, there's gonna be hypertension, which is gonna occur. So therefore, there's not gonna be a need for aldosterone regardless, but <clears throat> as a result with the hypertension, that's a key factor because as we discussed with 21 hydroxylase, there was hypotension that occurs. So this, the, the, the end products could be the exact same, but say if you could get a question on uh, your boards that, that show, okay, there's an increase, decrease, decrease, but if you see hypertension also, then you immediately have to think, okay, this is gonna be an 11 beta hydroxylase deficiency, and that's the key distinguishing point. So, the next thing that we're gonna be talking about is going to be 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency. Now, 17 alpha hydroxylase deficiency is gonna be a completely different road than these two. It's gonna be right here. So if we block out this road, you pretty much have no choice but to detour over all into this one pathway right here. Now you would think, okay, we have to detour this pathway, so we're most likely gonna be seeing an increase in aldosterone. 
However, this is not the case, and it's important to make note of this, because aldosterone is actually going to decrease. You're probably asking yourself, why is it going to decrease? Well, it's going to decrease because deoxycorticosterone is the road before aldosterone, or the enzyme before aldosterone. So when aldosterone increases, remember how we talked about it's a mineral or corticoid. It's going to be causing hypertension. So you're not going to need aldosterone. So therefore, there's going to be a decrease in aldosterone, but there's going to be an increase in deoxycorticosterone. And that's an important thing to understand. Okay, so here's an easy way of remembering the enzymes and sort of what they ex exactly do. This is what my friend saw me in first year. And I just want to pass it on to you guys. So pretty much you got to think about these enzymes as three brothers. You're going to have 21 hydroxylates, which is the big, the big brother, 11 beta hydroxylates, which is the younger brother, and 17 alpha hydroxylates, which is the middle child. Now 21 hydroxylates is 21. He is in college. And you could say that he has uninhibited sexual activity, so he's quite active. So we could say that there's going to be an increase in sex hormones. Now, 11-beta-hydroxylase is also little brother, so he sees big, big uh, brother uh, acting, uh, engaging, in engaging in sexual activities. So he also wants, wants to do the same thing. But because he's so, so young, he gets nervous just thinking about this, so he gets hypertension. So therefore, you're going to have an increase in sex hormones and an increase in hypertension as well. And lastly, you have the middle child, which is 17-alpha-hydroxylase, who sees 21, 21 and 11, both you know, engaging in their different activities, and he sort of feels left out. So he's kind of salty about this. He's a salty middle child. So when you think about salt, when you think about mineral corticoids increasing, so therefore, an increase in deoxycorticosteroid. So I'm not sure how much of that's going to help you, but you know, it actually helps me quite a bit because it's kind of funny. And yeah, so good luck, guys, and good luck on step one. Uh, if you have any comments, uh, please leave, leave uh, them below. Uh, please like, comment, subscribe, share, whatever you can. Thanks a lot.